In the last lecture, we looked at open circuit time constant analysis to find the high frequency pole uh, where the gain of an amplifier starts to roll off. In this lesson, we're going to look at the other, other uh, end of the spectrum, the low frequency. So remember, if we, when we have an amplifier, it's frequency response, or at least the magnitude of the frequency response, A of J omega, when plotted versus log omega, oftentimes looks something like this. It'll start, it, we'll have a, an increase uh, in amplitude response until some point, then the gain will flatten out until another point, and then it'll start to roll off. So it starts to flatten out at a point we'll label as omega L, the low frequency uh, pole, and it starts to roll off at a frequency we'll call omega H, the high frequency pole. And in between this, we have what we'll call the mid-band gain. Now we find the mid-band gain using the formulas on our inspection sheet. In the last class, we learned to find the high frequency response, FH of S, using the technique called OCTC, open circuit time constant. And we assumed that there was a dominant pole that caused this roll off. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to find the low frequency response, FL of S. It will also involve a dominant pole that causes the gain to flatten out. And we're going to find this using a technique called short circuit time constant, or SCTC as we'll abbreviate it. Now we assume that we have a response in the low frequency that looks like so. FL of S is equal to S divided by S plus omega L. So we have a zero at DC that causes this increase in the amplitude response until we reach the pole at omega L, which causes the flattening of the response. Now, we're assuming a dominant pole, so we assume that omega L is equal to a summation from I uh, up to the number of poles that there are of omega P sub I. So we assume that there are a bunch of poles, but we're going to sum them all together. This is equivalent to sum from I uh, to uh, N of 1 divided by CI times RI, where C sub I's in this case are various large capacitors in the circuit. So we're going to be looking at capacitors that are in the nanofarad and microfarad range. Big capacitors that we use for DC uh, blocking, uh, AC bypasses, etc. Now our R sub I are the driving point resistances, or the resistances seen across the terminals of the capacitor. And basically what these do is cause RC time constants, which we know create poles in our circuit. So to find the R sub I's, in this case what we're going to do is all large capacitors are shorted. Except the one we're analyzing. We're going to replace the one we're analyzing with a test voltage source. And we're going to measure the current flows from that, that, that flows from that test voltage source. We eliminate all independent sources 
So any voltage source, we short circuit. Any current source, we open circuit. And finally, all small capacitors are open circuited. We're analyzing for a low frequency, so small capacitors will have a high impedance at low frequency, so we can treat them like they're an open circuit. Okay, in the next uh, set of notes, we will look at an example.